the average citizen's not going to be okay until unless they take action. This is why people are angry, whether you're on the left or whether you're the right. You're you're angry because the system is failing you. And what's happening is you're a wage slave and you can't buy a house or you can't invest as much of the stock market that your parents could do. You just, A, cost of living is high, but B, asset prices keep coming up. And that's because they're debasing the currency. And what debasing the currency is, it sounds like a complicated economics term, but what it basically means is they're robbing you of the power to buy assets by, it's been on average 15% a year since 2008. So you're losing the ability to buy assets by 15% a year. Each year, you sit in a pile of cash and don't buy a house. That house is roughly going up at 15% a year. That's bananas. You sit on cash for two years or you don't have any savings, it gets more and more expensive. What they're actually doing here is taxing you, but by hiding it. It's like a socialization of all of this costs. But what's so massively unfair is it disproportionately hits people who are wage earners who don't own assets. So you and I, we have assets. And so your assets offset, maybe your wages, your, your income doesn't rise as much. But for the average person, they clock in, they go to work, they come home. Even if you're a dentist or a doctor or a lawyer, it, you're still in the same boat because your wages are not rising as fast as asset prices. So you're just, your future self gets poorer because what an asset is, is, and it can be the same for Bitcoin or gold or real estate, or equities, it's a way of putting your savings into something that you can get them back in the future. So it's your future consumptions, your future life is in those, but you can buy less of them. So your future life is getting poorer. So everybody's getting screwed over here and they don't understand why. Literally nobody is ready for what's coming for Bitcoin and crypto. That's the latest message out from macroeconomic expert, Raul Paul. This week, Bitcoin is flying, breaking over $50,000 and making it now over a $1 trillion asset. Global macro investor Raul Paul thinks this surge couldn't have come at a better time. In his latest interview, he shared his economic outlook, especially in the United States. Raul did not hold back, expressing deep concerns over the constant devaluation of the dollar, which he believes is even more severe than everyone initially thought. With the November election coming in America, he's worried that politicians' empty promises will only make things worse by flooding the system with more cash. Raul doesn't see an end to the dollar's downward spiral, suggesting that the Federal Reserve's solution of printing more money is useless. However, there is hope. Raul sees a silver lining in crypto, urging folks to dive in now whilst liquidity is coming back into the system. Delaying action, he warns, could mean watching your potential wealth evaporate in real time. However, make sure to stick around to the end of the video where Raul reveals his biggest bets in his crypto portfolio. Also guys, only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy staying up to date with finance content, consider subscribing or liking the video. It's free and you can always change your mind. Now here's Raul on why he thinks crypto is about to erupt. People understand that the system is broken and they're looking for answers. Some people choose gold, some people look, choose Bitcoin. People use different ways of, of getting around this. They can feel it, it's all around you. You can see it with populism, you can see it with just how markets react. So there's this feeling that I need to find an answer here. A lot of that is being driven by, we know there's all this debt and I'm scared of it. Okay, that's good. The other thing is, what is the answer that the central banks chose or the governments? It was create more money. So you've got this macro backdrop of debt and this fear, that's driving adoption. And then people are finding new use cases like NFTs for smart contract stuff. That's creating a technology adoption like anything, like the internet was. And it happens to be the fastest adoption of any technology the world has ever seen, except AI, which has been faster. But we're also finding that, that the central banks are debasing currency. They're making our money less valuable. So we're looking for things that are a store of value over time. That's not necessarily against goods inflation. It's against the thing that governments and central banks always do. They clip the corners off the coins until you've got no coin left. That's a way of taxing you without you knowing. And that's to pay the debts that the government has because of the aging population and all the debts out there. So those two things are driving the movement of crypto. So the crypto price is based off those two issues. The adoption of the technology, as everybody's starting to build on this new tech stack and because it solves a lot of problems. And then it's the thing that the central banks are doing are devaluing your currency all the time. That creates a super mega trend within this. Now, if as a space, is growing on average, including the bear markets, which are brutal as we all know, it's growing at 100% a year as a space. 
So there are 516 million wallets as of end of last year, active wallets. If it's growing at 100%, by the end of this year, it's a billion. Then the end of the year after, it's two billion. So the numbers are vast as people are adopting it. Now, the difference here between this and the internet or the mobile phone is we were users of the internet and mobile phone, but we didn't make money out of it unless you happen to own the right shares, but nobody could own the infrastructure of the internet. Different parts were. Here, you can actually own the thing by owning a token. So we're getting to participate in something that has never happened for humanity, which is a global infrastructure being built by everybody around the world at the same time, and we can own a fraction of it. So this is, at an investor level, why it now matters to everybody, this is the first global homogenous investment product the world has ever seen that can operate like this. So it's the same product. Bitcoin is Bitcoin in India as it is in Nigeria, as it is in London, as it is in Hawaii. It's the same thing. Indian investors can't take, trade Tesla shares. Yes, they can trade gold, but they don't have access to it because you have to go to the store and buy gold jewelry and you've lost a lot of the, the markup within that. But here, anybody can get a wallet because it's on the internet and you can send money home to your mother in the Philippines from the United States instantaneously. And by just owning one of the tokens, an Ethereum token or whatever it is, you've got a share of it. So if more people adopt it, you get richer. This is like one of the greatest schemes the world has ever seen in creating mass wealth, not for Wall Street, but for retail, who got to front run all of this and create a new system that solves the problem of what the central banks and governments are doing and solves the problem of an over-indebted society. I mean, that's how big it is. So let's look at those two component parts, main parts. One was the debt cycle. That's not changing. In fact, the governments are issuing more debt to pay the interest on the previous debt. And that's pushed interest rates up and it's made it even harder. So the debt keeps going up. Okay, so we haven't solved that one. And it's just accelerating because we're now having to pay the interest on the COVID bond issuance, debt issuance. So it, it's going vertical right now. So we know they're incentivized to continue this path. On the other side is, are they going to debase the currency? Well, they've been doing the opposite in 2022. Why crypto had such a bear market, as most things did, is they were taking liquidity out because there was inflation. So here we are where, if we look at trueflation, which is an on blockchain measure of inflation, it's at like 1.4%. So inflation's come down. It's not the boogeyman anymore. Growth, interest rates are too high for that kind of environment at 5.5%. So the probability is they're gonna lower interest rates. We're seeing China, in an economic mess. They've got a full debt deflation going on. Same issues, aging population, high debts, everything's blowing up. They're likely to stimulate further. The Europeans are likely to end up stimulating further and eventually the US will stimulate more as well because they need to get growth to pay for these interest costs. So that is what lies ahead. And then we've got the other sweet spot in the middle of this, which is politicians hand out candy during elections. And the candy that everybody wants is stimulus. So they will hand out stimulus, which needs to be paid for. It either ends up on the Fed balance sheet or some other liquidity measure to allow the government to fund itself. So what we've got is a high probability that our money's gonna be worth less, asset prices are gonna rise, but our wages won't, which is the big problem. So we're, our future selves are getting poorer because we can't afford as many assets. And we've got this massive wave of debts to be refinanced. So that's normally a very positive backdrop for crypto. Lots of liquidity and liquidity is what drives all markets, but crypto is the super massive black hole that sucks in so much capital when this happens. People don't understand because it looks like their stock market, their 401k has gone up and all of this, but that's only a small percent. That's like 10% of the population who have assets. And those people are very happy with it. The more assets you own, the more powerful you are, the more assets you probably own, the less likely you are gonna call the authorities into question. The average guy working in Cincinnati who suddenly can't make his ends meet and can't buy an apartment, what voice does he have in this? And he's been taxed at 15% a year and has been 15% a year. And he has been since 2008. And he just doesn't understand what's going on. He doesn't know who to blame. So what they blame is one party or the other, and it's not. So my advice is, I spend a lot of time, I haven't talked a lot about it, but I spend a lot of time looking at the macro economy, what is going and where it's gonna drive assets. And my view is that the issues we've been talking about, printing of money, excess debt, are going to be the feature of the next two years. How do you pay for that? 
And so therefore I am very aggressively positioned in crypto because the only other secular trend there is, I can divide any assets like the S&P 500 or real estate or gold by the central bank balance sheet, the Fed balance sheet, i.e. how much money are the Fed printing or putting on their books. And most of them are pretty flat line. Then you look at the NASDAQ and it's going up because we're getting more digital every day. So there's endless demand. And then crypto goes up exponentially as we know. So the fastest race, a horse in the race is crypto. So I'm actually 100% of my liquid net worth in this. And I have been actually for since 2020. And I use the bear markets to add into, because I think we are in a once in a lifetime wealth accumulation opportunity for everybody. Be you rich or poor, you can still put 10% of your savings in as you go. And so that's how strongly I feel about it. It's not just a passing interest. It's not something I say on TV. It's something I actually truly believe in. My view is that Coinbase has 110 million accounts. They're not all the US. Let's say 50% of the US. It's probably more of which there are about 12 million actives. And I think that'll go up. So think of those as the voters. So there's a swing vote here of somewhere around 10 to 20 million voters probably who care about this enough. So it probably matters reasonably. Yeah. You need to look at the distribution of crypto owners. Are they all on the coasts? I'm not sure. I think it's pretty evenly split. So I think it would help the Democrats. I think whoever's going to take it, we've seen RFK take it. So that's the independent. We've seen the Republicans haven't fully embraced it. Vivek did, but we don't know where he's going to shake out. Trump's obviously made the NFTs. He hasn't made the I hate mooch NFTs yet, but I'm sure they're coming. Well, yeah, I mean, I hope he makes those. I'll be buying those, actually. He'll make some money off of How I think of it, I think there's a 60% chance that's just a normal crypto cycle. So Bitcoin finishes 150 to 250,000. Yeah, you know, it does a few X the last all time highs. There's a 20% chance that because of the ETF and how the economic cycle works, everyone gets overexcited about rate cuts, or whatever, that we kind of front load it and it's short. But then there's another 20% chance that this actually extends further than we expect because institutions and others come into the space and it broadens out. So I think 60% chance normal cycle, 20% super cycle, 20% actually a short cycle. Gold and silver have, have always played this role that Bitcoin does. It always will do. It is a global store of wealth. Gold is probably the world's true gl global currency. But what we're finding is in a digital age, they don't work as well. Because I can send you Bitcoin in a few seconds, but for me to transfer a gold ownership is a very physical process or we move paper rights around which is kind of goes against the case for it so gold will do fine in the same environment is there to save you it's just not done as well because it doesn't have this technology super cycle behind it so i prefer crypto than gold or silver but they're ways of skinning the same cat as you say so there's Raul Paul with his detailed views on the economic landscape, especially when it comes to the soaring trajectory of Bitcoin. With his sharp analysis and candid insights, Raul highlights the challenges of monetary devaluation and the potential pitfalls of excessive money printing. Yet amidst these concerns, he sees a glimmer of hope in the world of crypto, urging investors to seize the opportunity whilst the iron is hot. As we navigate through uncertain times, Raul's words serve as a beacon of wisdom, reminding us to stay informed and proactive in safeguarding our financial futures. Before we go, a quick reminder for those who are keen on staying updated in the fast-paced world of crypto and Bitcoin, consider subscribing to our daily 5-minute crypto newsletter. It's a concise resource for the latest expert predictions, breaking news, and top on-chain analysis trusted by over 50,000 subscribers for insightful crypto investment information. Click the first link in the description to join our community and elevate your crypto investment knowledge today. Anyway guys, hope you all enjoyed today's video and that provided you with some value. I'll see you all in the next one and as always, all the best.